I call them people of trust um, for your end consumer, right. right? So if the homeowner you're working with, or maybe the uh, developer that you're working with, or the GC, everyone's got a person of trust. It's their word of mouth network, right? And if you can think of the entire process from start to finish of where the end consumer or your customers, uh, the process they go through, think of yourself downstream and think of what's upstream. So for, we've already mentioned some of them, but it is the architect, it is the designer, it is the GC, it is the um, insurance agent or the real estate agent. Uh, there's someone upstream that's a person of trust. And if you can figure out how to serve that person of trust to keep them as a person of trust, to amplify their trust with their, their customers and consumers and make them feel good about referring you and passing work along to you and whatever, I mean, you're going to be so much better off than trying to do, you know, ad campaigns on Facebook, trying to get people to click and all this kind of stuff. I mean, word of mouth is by far the biggest source of business. So just try to amplify that by finding people that will give you more word of mouth and have a trustworthy um, voice in your customer's ear. Yeah. Having, having said that, um, you're not suggesting that we let people off the hook and they need a good website, right? This day and age. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, they need it. Th there's certain things that you yeah, like are, are table stakes, right? right? You've got to, at a certain level, like you've got to have at least like a name for your business. Right. right? <laughs> but you, I mean, you've got to have certain things in place and you're going to get business through those. Yeah, you should be doing something on Facebook if that's a good channel for you. You should be doing something on Google My Business if that's a channel for you. Those things really do matter. But at the end of the day, like some of the best thing, one of the best channels that you can focus on for your business is just use the people of trust in your customer's ear that talk, and talk try to, to the same understand audience. them, yeah. help them win, and they'll help you win. Yeah, yeah. I think the point I like to make to people is let's exhaust the low hanging fruit, hate the cliche, but of exactly. force multipliers. I'd rather talk to five designers and get 25 jobs than talk to 200, do 200 bids to get 25 jobs, right? And you get to know them, you become trusted, you understand what they want that maybe they haven't articulated and you get better and better at it. And that costs you a lot less than $15,000 a month for a television campaign. I'm not saying that at some point you don't need to do television, but um, it's the low hanging fruit. And so that's thinking who are those full force multipliers for you? Uh, the people who are trusted and yeah. do business with the same uh, audience target market that you're after. Yeah. And it, 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 it is a low hanging fruit and, you know, it's, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's easy. It's, it's simple, but it's not necessarily easy. We talked about that with Nolan Bradbury right. a couple of weeks ago. Um, but I think at the same time, you don't always have to do something new. I think people think like, oh, I got to, you know, increase, you know, the amount of revenue I'm bringing in or the amount of leads I have. What can I do that's new? I mean, first, can you just optimize what you've already done? Right. If you're, if you've got a really good channel that's been working for you and gotten you to this point, can you double down on it? How can you squeeze the most out of that before trying something new that you've got to experiment with? You got to test, you got to figure out if it works, you've got to invest money into, you've got to learn how to, you know, the knowledge and the know-how for that channel. Um, it's usually just not, not as, uh, efficient as going for the low hanging fruit and optimizing what you've already got in place. And the idea of searching for what your collaborators, your influencers want is an extension of something that we've talked about before. And it's pain times a vision, what you don't want articulated times what you have a vision for how things should run need to be greater than resistance. We talk, we've talked about that before. And generally I talk about it in context with my clients along the line of, I need to know what you want to get away from. And I need to know clearly what do you want to get toward? Otherwise you're not going to do the work to change. So I'm usually talking to my clients first about that, but it occurs to me, it occurred to me a long time ago, that's true of everything. That's the sales formula. When you're selling to somebody, your role is not to tell them how great you are and how much you've done. If they want to ask, you can tell them, but it's to find out what their pain is, what they don't want, 
and what they do want and have a vision for. And if you can articulate that back to them and give that to them, you're going to be the hero. So it's true of the owner. It's true of the customer. It's true of the people who work for you. Uh, jumping back to how you started this podcast, what do they not want and what do they want? And the better you understand that, the better. It's never about you, ever, ever. Uh, and it just works out that if you provide for others, it'll come back at you in a in a tidal wave. Yeah. But if you're going directly for, I got to get this out of that guy, it's, I just say, good luck, if that's what you're thinking. So it's that uh, identifying what yeah. other people don't want, what's bothering them, and what they do want, their ideal future. That's your role in life in, with everybody, with the influencers, your employees, yourself, yeah. uh, your customers, everybody. That's your role. Find that out. 